for sticking it out with us. I know it's been a long few days and there's so much information to absorb, but I think I'd like to say that we've saved the best for last. Our we have a huge responsibility up here because <laughs> how you will walk away from Canatech will solely rely on our presentation today. No pressure. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about topicals and transdermals. And Alec is perfectly poised to do that, working at CBD Medic, a topical, sometimes topicals company. Tell us, Alec. Uh, yeah, sure. So I want to go just a little bit uh, back to you know what Abacus Health Products. Abacus Health Products is the name of our parent company. We operate two brands, CBD Medic and, and CBD Clinic, and we've been doing so since 2016. However, prior to that, our company was launched by a dermatological pharmaceutical company. Uh, so obviously the synergies there are delivering ingredients through the skin, whether it's CBD or coconut oil, vitamin E, uh, colloidal oatmeal, uh, you need to have some technological know-how of actually how to deliver drugs through the skin in order to make a meaningful therapeutic action. Uh, so we have unique pharmaceutical technology and IP. We have uh, about 150 different products for both cannabinoids and non-cannabinoid use. Uh, we manufacture OTC topical drugs, which I'm going to explain the difference between uh, drugs and, and cosmetics or nutraceutical products throughout this uh, presentation today. Uh, we have an FDA registered uh, production facility, so our, our manufacturing facility is CGMP. It's also uh, audited and compliant with FDA standards for OTC drugs. Uh, our executive team is about 20 years combined FDA regulatory compliance. Uh, so, you know, a wealth of knowledge that we were able to leverage from traditional dermatological pharmaceutical world and bridge that into cannabis. And that's really the essence of this conversation today is how can we do that successfully? How can we leverage the pre-existing retail distribution networks in the world and make them accessible for cannabinoid products? So, as you know, the media plays a big part in whether or not anything succeeds or fails. And CBD is poised, uh, a year ago I said CBD was poised to eclipse cannabis sales. And people looked at me like I was nuts, like how could that possibly happen? But CBD and hemp are often confused, but they're not the same thing. So there's actual cannabis CBD and there's hemp CBD, and you cannot have those two together. In dispensaries in California, CBD has to be separate. It cannot be in a dispensary. And that causes confusion in the marketplace because people can't always tell the difference. But the one thing that they do know is that they, they're learning that CBD doesn't get you high. And people who don't want to get high want CBD. Um, I think one, one big thing here is that you know this, this news report highlights that, that the CBD industry is expected to be $22 billion in 2022. Uh, it also highlights in, in yellow up there that uh, it was about $600 million in products sold in 2018. So right there, you're talking about 40x growth. Uh, anyone you know, who's an investor or anyone who's, who's looking at the industry you know, would be pretty excited about 40x in growth. Um, you know, that's, that's a good multiplier. But how does that actually happen? Uh, you know, how does that happen considering the overarching regulatory framework that we are dealing with, or more so is actually being created under our feet every single day, and compounded with the fact that over the course of the last 15 years since, you know, California actually legalized uh, cannabis medicinally for the first time, being the first state to do so, only 1% of Americans actually went ahead, got medical marijuana cards so that they could go into a dispensary. The majority of individuals around the world do not want to go to cannabis dispensaries in order to buy products. So how can a retail, how can the market grow 40x? It's accessibility. These products need to be just as accessible as our other consumer products that we are buying at the shelf. They need to be at the local supermarket, they need to be at the local gas station, and they need to be at the local pharmacy store. Because that's really where you're going to have wide scale accessibility and the ability for individuals to uh, try cannabis products for the first time, those of which are actually apprehensive to go into a taboo dispensary. So switching a little bit, I want to talk uh, about how you can actually 
leverage the traditional retail markets uh, through the lens of a dermatological pharmaceutical product. So just very, very quickly, I'm going to go through uh, actually what is the skin. Uh, it has three main functions, protection, regulation, sensation. It regulates our body tension, uh, temperature. It synthesizes uh, vitamin D into our bodies. Uh, it actually regulates pain and touch and heat and cooling. It's a huge, huge impact. It's the largest organ in our body by weight. It's actually also the first organ to signal dehydration. When your lips get chapped, you're thirsty. It's true. Um, skin is a drug delivery pathway. Uh, there's three main layers of the skin. You have the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. Uh, the derma, epidermis is really the protection layer. Uh, the dermis are the more of the fatty layers uh, that actually have the nerves inside of them. And the hypodermis is uh, the closest layer to our muscle, which protects the fascia of our skin. Uh, there's really two terminologies that are used when describing a cosmetic or a medical topical product. Um, you know, that is meant for application on the skin. You're talking about topical products and transdermal products. Uh, a lot of bad actors in the CBD market are marketing their products as transdermal, when in fact they may or may not be. The main difference between a topical and a transdermal product is that a topical product is going to be applied locally. It's only going to heal that local spot, whereas a transdermal is actually penetrating through all of the dermal layers, as I've just outlined, and going systemic into the bloodstream. So any product that is a transdermal product needs to go through the full drug approval process uh, that the regulatory body has, because you might be applying uh, a transdermal product on your elbow, which is actually made to help you uh, in, your, uh, in your knee. And so it's really going systemic the same way that an ingestible product would, and they are regulated uh, at a much higher le level, uh, you know, rightfully so, because it's going into your bloodstream. Continuing on, I just want to talk a little bit uh, about the uh, cosmetic versus the medical regulatory pathways as they exist in America. It's very important to note that there are different regulatory pathways in every country around the world. However, the main factor that I want to talk about here is medical claims, and especially egregious medical claims. Uh, there are the majority of products uh, you are not allowed to make a medical claim on. You know, if you do not have proper regulatory approval to do so, you are 100% not allowed to write that the product is helpful for autism or helpful for Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome or pain relief. You really need to be careful. And whether it's a testimonial that one of your patients has or you're, you know, someone using your product, you're not allowed to leverage that on your website, even if it's someone else saying it. And you know, we have had numerous examples of how this is actually being done. Um, I want to, uh, unfortunately, our slide that we had uh, just from last night, uh, because there was news put out by the FDA last night and Sarah Brittany wrote an article about it. Um, but Sarah, why don't you talk a little bit about you know, the, the egregious medical claims and, and what just happened yesterday? So jet lag worked in my favor because I woke up at two in the morning and it was business hours in the United States and the FDA had just dropped a warning on 15 CBD companies for making egregious claims and they named them and shamed them and wrote specifically what they did wrong. So if you want to read that, it's on Forbes. <laughs> But they basically went through every company and said, you cannot make these claims. And this 15 are just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure there are hundreds that are doing this. And even though it's hard because you want to sell your product, that is not the way to do it. That's totally right. Um, you know, on the far left side here, we have prescription drug approval. This is, uh, you know, something that is very difficult to do. You're talking about multiple clinical studies, placebo studies, and it's going to cost you about 10 to 15 mil uh, million dollars and about five to 10 years to execute on. Epidiolex is the only product in America that has gone through this process and is able to make a medical claim for just one condition right now. Uh, which is a very small subsection of seizures. Um, on the far right side, we have dietary supplements and cosmetics. This is where the whole cannabis industry is right now, especially with CBD products, meaning they are 
relying on um, what are called DSHEA laws in the states, and they're not able to make any medical claims. There's also no pre-market or post-market surveillance on their products. So it's just anyone, any entrepreneur in the room, um, you know, coming up with a formulation, putting it in a bottle, and trying to sell it either direct to the consumer or on retail shelves. Where our company works is right in the middle, the OTC drug platform, in which we are leveraging pre-approved active ingredients uh, that have been proven efficacious for use for specific medical indications and using them in association with cannabinoids when cannabinoids have been proven successful for that indication. And I'm actually gonna illustrate that exactly how that works. Just before we go to that next slide, I wanna add that some of the companies on the FDA admonishment list were not even making medical claims. They were making supplement claims and that is not proven either. Definitely. Um, there's a few different ways in which you can identify a cosmetic versus a medical product. Um, you know, they're often actually written just on the label itself, whether it's a supplement or a drug. Um, on the drug facts, because this is really what I want to educate on, everyone on today, uh, you have what are called active and inactive ingredients. You'll see the active ingredients written on the top, camphor and menthol. Um, active versus inactive, or active versus excipient, as it's known in the rest of the world, uh, just really refers to the active ingredients of what you're making your medical claims on. Um, I just want to really quickly illustrate a few different products. The APIs, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients, are those actives. Um, Icy Hot, this is the number one selling brand in America. $155 million of sales just for one product. This is just one SKU that they have. Uh, the indication that these APIs, menthol, camphor, and lidocaine, are approved for is for pain relief. So how does that play out? I've taken the exact product, the number one seller, put it on the right side. It shows the indication, exactly as I just mentioned, arthritis, pain relief. What is the API? Menthol. Okay, this is our company, CBD Medic, on the left side. The indication, arthritis, aches, pain relief, ointment. What is the API? Camphor and menthol. So this is a beautiful illustration of the ways in which we can leverage technology and know-how and ingredients that are currently selling on the market we can add CBD or other cannabinoids when it's actually preclinic, when there is preclinical or clinical data to support for that indication, and put it in a consumer facing format that answers the question that everyone wants to know what is the CBD good for? You can message it right on your label if you do so appropriately. The same illustration here for acne, number one product, Neutrogena, $94 million of sales. Same thing, we have the Neutrogena product on the right side, the indication is for acne, the API is salicylic acid. On the left side, Ac CBD Medic, acne treatment medicated cream, the indication, acne, the API, salicylic acid. There is CBD inside of this product as well, but we right now and nowhere around the world can you make a claim on the CBD, again, unless you are an FDA approved drug, which Epidiolex is the only one in the world right now uh, approved under that framework. Finally, we have eczema, Avino Active Naturals, that's about a $33 million product in the States, eczema therapy, medicated ointment, eczema therapy, colloidal oatmeal. So there are a, pharma a pharmacopoeia of ingredients that are pre-approved for these indications. And consumers want to understand, oh, is CBD helping for this or that or that or that? And we do have some data to support. We know it's a fantastic anti-inflammatory. We know that it's a fantastic neuromodulator, but we can't make those claims yet. And that's what happens when the FDA comes out. So, you know, CBD, what will it take for CBD to become actually an API? Well, as you guys probably know, CBD is just one of 100 plus active ingredients. There's going to be a slew of other microcannabinoids that we understand might be better for other indications. So as the science obviously progresses, it's going to take companies doing what's called an RX to OTC switch, in which something, for example, like Epidiolex, getting the full clinical support that they need and registering their products as an API under the FDA approved category and moving it over into the OTC category so that we can leverage them at lower percentages uh, inside the OTC drug pathway once proven safety. Mechanism of action um, is essentially a, a pharma uh, pharma word for what is each ingredient doing pharmacologically inside of the body. Um, and the mechanism of action for CBD is still 
to be determined. We all know that it works on the CV receptors, CV1, CV2. Is it direct? Is it indirect? Is it actually uh, facilitating the anandamide production? And this is a very difficult thing for us to understand right now. I want to pass it over to Sarah Brittany to talk a little bit about CBD as a CBG um, or a consumer packaged good. Because coming back to the earlier point of the conversation, uh, consumer packaged goods is where we will succeed at as an industry. That is where the money is made and everything is about branding. Thank you, Alex. So you can see from this amazing chart all the ways in which you can pursue CBD marketing and all the ways in which you can't. As you know, if you try to advertise on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, it will be shut down, if not when. You cannot advertise on mainstream media, so what recourse does that leave you? In this point, I would say editorial is going to be your best course of action. Another wonderful place to advertise. These are just some funny photos that I pulled from the net. Uh, one of them is our company, uh, two of them are not, but these are just creative marketing techniques. Everyone's always talking about how can you actually build a brand? And you have to get creative. You can leverage TSA bins. You can leverage billboards. This in Hebrew says, let's get Chai, Chai, uh, in celebration of Hanukkah upcoming. This is a real billboard in, in California, by the way. <laughs> and this is our company. We're right on the shelf in CVS Pharmacy, the largest retail pharmacy chain in America. And it's not only enough to get distribution in a retail pharmacy chain, but once you're in that store, how are you actually taking the product and pushing it off the shelf? You don't want to spend a ton of money on digital marketing or editorial to send someone into a retail location only to have them switch to another product. So this is just a real life example of what we are doing in store at CVS to drive consumers to understand that our products are there. That's referred to as POP, point of purchase. Thank you. So we're totally out of time <laughs> and uh, I'd love to continue the conversation either in the booth or find me after. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you.